Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, Testing Minibytes. I am your friend Amunal Shaktivel, and this is one of the uh, most awaited video. Uh, so, as you all might be aware, that I've been creating an one framework uh, that's can that can be used to automate web, mobile, and AP automation, right? So, so this is the exact framework that I'm speaking about, and uh, you know, I'm going to walk through what are the different folder structure here and what are the different libraries that I've used. And I will also leave you some of the important links to learn about all these libraries before you can start using this particular framework, right? So, so yeah, so there are a lot of frameworks already available in the market, but uh, this one is is again completely open source and built on top of Selenium, which which basically built on top of Selenium, right? So, um, you you want to see how easy the code is when you use Selenium, right? Um, yeah, so so let's go and see about the different framework section here and then i'll walk you through the different libraries and how the actual tests look like and everything right um good so so now um this particular framework uh you know i've been using uh, uh palm red xml which indicates maven as the uh dependency management tool and you could see all the libraries here and and java version that i'm using here is 11. Uh, obviously we could try uh, java 17 and all that but since it's also contain apm uh, there may be some compatibility issues. I'm not sure about it. Uh, but yeah, for now, 11 works absolutely fine in my machine and it should also work in your case. Uh, so there are different libraries that have been used here. Um, you know, uh, for example, uh, you know, the first one that I'm using here is the assert J. This is for writing uh, assertions. I have a separate playlist on all these libraries. So I leave the playlist description uh, link in the description of this particular video. So you could go ahead and watch all of them if you don't understand any of this or you know have it heard about these libraries before. Now all these libraries have significant impact on the code that we write. So I, I recommend highly recommend to watch all these videos before we, before you know start using this particular framework. So again, Warner is a very important library that I use to handle my uh, property files and and manage different environments. It's gonna make your code much much easy. Uh, so I want to use a new reporting uh, with Selenide. So I have added all these dependencies and the Selenide is the one that we need. Uh, it's built on top of Selenium and APM. So if you add this particular dependency, it, being, it brings it itself uh, the se Selenium and APM. So you don't have to add them separately here. And then we are using JUnit. Again, JUnit have phenomenal advantage over TestNG. You so if you notice, I have no TestNG.xml. So I don't have any test suites maintained in an XML file. So if you use XML files, the problem is people are sending test data from XML files, the testng.xml files. We also send data from uh, external files like Excel, JSON. So there are a lot of places from where an input is coming to the test code, which I don't understand. And also the testng.xml is, is pretty noisy, right? So why do you want to do something like that, right? So JUnit, not only you know improves all that but also gives you a lot of cleaner implementation even if you want to use data provider kind of thing you know all this stuff is is much cleaner with junit so i highly recommend using junit and the and the lumbok is is for uh, avoiding the boilerplates and podam is is again a library to generate pojos uh, with with uh, filled with random values uh, rest assured again for api automation needs Again, allu rest assured is, is for reporting with the rest assured and API calls. Um, and then we have uh, faker for generating, you know, random values and all the stuff. And the sch schema validator for validating the response schemas, right? So we also have other archetype plugins and uh, aspect JViewer. These are all needed for the allu reporting. So again, I'm also using check stripe, which I'll speak about in a second, right? So so this is all about the format XML. And let's go to go to the uh, you know folder section so here the dot github slash workflows indicates the github actions or the ca that i'm going to use so there are a lot of workflows here you can go ahead and check each of them for example this check state xml checks whether the code that we have written is actually uh you know matching the check style standards right different people use different formatting and uh, this one uh, basically validates whether you know the code that someone have written is is actually uh, according to the standards or not. If if it is not according to the standard, 
this will fail and and blocks the mergers happening to the main. So, so this is a required check. So again, this is really branch on close, which means if a PR getting close, the branch associated with the PR will be automatically deleted. So you can go through all of them. They are all pretty simple stuff. The sonar check indicates we are doing a static analysis of the code being written with sonar cloud. So if somebody is creating a code, it will be associated with sonar cloud. Uh, and if all the rules are passed, there are no violation, they are allowed to be merged to the main. Otherwise, uh, we will not allow them to merge to the main. So it is very important to have these kind of checks to keep your main branch uh, free from errors, right? So if you want to run your API test, these are all the workflows that you could use for web tests, or you want to run your mobile test in Lambda test, all these things you can have a look at it, right? I have a separate playlist on GitHub Actions. Uh, I highly recommend to watch that, right? And the apps folder is where I keep all my, um, you know, the APK files and the zip files for, for the mobile app automation needs, um, pretty simple. And the config is where the place that I keep my checkstyle.xml. So again, as I mentioned, checkstyle is for formatting checks. Um, you know, for example, let's say this XML file defines what the check styles will look for. For example, if you notice the tab width is two. So if you, um, you know, some people use four as tab width, but here, uh, if you are writing code in my uh, framework, you have to use two. That's how I define it. Because if you keep two, four, six, you know, these things doesn't really, um, you know, looks good. So we want to make sure that everybody uses tab width of two and stuff like that. So pack package name should be uh, all these things, right? So, so illegal imports. So you cannot have, you know, uh, redundant imports, unused imports, uh, parenthesis padding, like if you have a parenthesis, uh, you should have a space in between them, method parameters. So all these things are basically defined here. If you think some of them, so for example, line length is 136 is the max that you could write. Um, if you have a line that is exceeding this, it will fail. So you can al always customize this or you can also uh, quickly disable them here. Uh, there is also suppression.xml where you could go and disable any of the things that you feel is too much to write code. Uh, sometimes if you put too much of thing, uh, you know, checks, it, it might, sm uh, you know, slow down the people. So, so we have to strike the right balance between having the formatting checks and also allowing people to write 3D. So, so for example, uh, star imports is not really important in an SRC test Java. So we don't really bother about it in the SRC test Java folders. Uh, Java doc styles is, is too clumsy, it make your, code uh, looks unreadable. So, so I don't recommend Java doc style anymore. Uh, and then new line at the end of the file. Uh, I don't need this for any of the resources folder. Uh, line length is ignored in SRC test resources and main resources. This is because we might have JSON files. Uh, we might have property files and all that. So in this resources folder, we don't have to apply that rule there. So this is how you can suppress those warnings, right? So that's all good. And this editor.config is, is where uh, I have exported the check style configuration, right? So, because uh, nobody can manually edit all these things, right? If you want to format all these things, it takes a lot of time. So instead of that, what you can do is you can tell your ID, hey ID, use this editor config for the for, you know, formatting. It, it, it is supported by all the IDs. Even if you use IntelliJ, VS Code, Eclipse, doesn't matter editor config is recognized by every every IDs and you could just uh, you know use this file for the formatting and it will automatically format according to the check style conventions defined here and then the doc, dot ignore is uh, get ignore is obviously uh, you know like there are some files that we don't want to push to remote and we keep them there um, and then the readme obviously uh, that explains what this framework is all about uh, what are the different libraries used and stuff like that and renovate.json is something is, is similar to dependabot. For example, uh, if there is a new uh, uh, release for the uh, selenite, okay? So what happens is uh, this renovate automatically tracks it. Um, so if selenite team publish 6.19, it automatically tracks it and then creates a pull request in this particular repository to update these dependencies. Like, you know, if you don't update your dependencies you know, as soon as the latest version is available, it becomes a technical debt. You don't want to do that. So that's why you need to have a tools like Defender Bot and Renovate or Renovate 
but in my case i i used you know, depend about in the past but there are a lot of advantages uh, with with renovate and that's the reason i i use renovate now and uh, i will make a separate video about renovate uh, but this is how it looks like so it once you integrate the renovate into the github uh, so it also shows you uh, hey uh, there is one particular dependency that is waiting for approval that is this uh, j unit so uh, to 5.10.0 currently 5.9.2 is the version and there is an update available to, for 5.10.0 the reason why i didn't update it because the the allure j unit uh, that i'm using is is still using the 5.9.2 so if I update just this alone to 5.10, uh, the 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 con conflict of differences is making uh, the test not to be picked. So that's why this is being ignored. Once this issue is resolved, you just need to click on this check checkbox and it will automatically create a PR to merge them. So it will look into all these files, GitHub Actions, Docker. We have a Docker Compose, Docker file. Everything it looks uh, for update, right? For example, I'll show you one of the uh, PRs that it created. So, so this is a PR that Renovate created for me. So if you notice uh, the actions checkout uh, job, uh, action that I'm using in my uh, GitHub workflows, it updated from V3 to V4 version. And then the Selenium standalone Chrome that I'm using in my, um, you know, CI is also uh, updated to 115 to 116. So similarly, other different libraries are getting updated automatically. And if you notice, this is the file changes that it, it does. So it changed from V3 to V4 automatically and created pull request for you so that, you know, you don't have to track all these things individually. <clears throat> and, and there is something that I have, that the tests are actually failing. So I have some required checks, right, that were failing. So what I did was I just uh, uh, reverted this 5.9.2, okay? It, it updated to 5.10.0, but then I understood there is a conflict here. And then I, I you know, uh, reverted this J unit version alone to 5.9.2. And then there were small changes that I did. So this is not part of the Renovate changes. I did this myself. So, so this is how Renovate can be really helpful. You can also go and look at the other Renovate PRs that you have created. Um, so you, you should be in a position to understand all of that, right? Good. Um, so that's all about it uh, in the folder structure. And within the SRC, we write our test code inside test and the uh, main folder is for other stuff, right? Um, so maybe I will open the uh, IntelliJ here um, just to go through these things. Um, again, um, you know, you could write web test inside a web folder and the add employee test is, is the one that I have already written. Again, guys, it's very important to know about all these libraries so that you could write code here, right? So now SRC main Java, SRC test Java, these are the two folders. We write our test. Uh, if you are writing the API test, you can write inside here. If you are writing your mobile test, you can write inside this. We have setup classes for different stuff. You can mention them all here, right? Now, so for, let's say you want to write your API test, okay? And, you know, you can create an API class to interact with any of these stuff, right? If you want to create a user, you create a wrapper method and then unwrap all these uh, uh, intricacies there. And then you can simply call user API dot get user of two, which means it goes, it makes a, a get call to this particular endpoint uh, with the user ID of two that we passed and it will give you the response back. With the response, you could assert the response whether it is equal to 200 and it matches the schema mentioned in this file um, that is present actually here, if you go to the schema. So this is the get user schema.json, whether it is matching this one. And then you can also add matching rules, uh, which uses predicate again to check whether the data.email in the response body is, is having this exact value. Uh, and you want to assert all of them at the end. So this is how you could write your API test. And this is the API layer you can use uh, to wrap all these, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the entity level separation, for example, this is user level. So the, it relates to users. So let's say there is a, a student API. You can also create student API and then uh, wrap all the get post and patch calls there 
so it becomes much easier right and yeah so you you have your owner config factories and remo config here uh, yeah so this basically helps you to handle all the property files so what it does is if you have a property files let's say configured property dev different configured properties there are three different environments config uh, dev config staging config so you can keep co common config that is available for all the environments here if there is an url or something that is specific to an environment uh, for development you can put it here for staging you can put it here and uh, and what it does is so for example currently if, if you are not passing any environment value uh, the, the staging will be the value right so for the environment so now web url becomes staging because environment is already staging so this becomes staging dot url and it goes and check all these files it will check your uh, system properties environment variables and then check all these files and looks for staging dot url and that particular thing is present here staging dot url then what it does is it creates uh, it, it copies that value and put it here. So this is the use of that uh, uh, owner library. And uh, you know you could directly use them in the code. And uh, you know if you want to access this particular framework config anywhere outside, uh, you you use getr create framework config dot class and uh, it, it, it will return you the instance of this framework config, which is this. So just if you go to uh, any any test, for example, I go to here and then I say config factory dot config, and then you get get this framework config. So this particular instance, if you get an instance of this particular um, interface, and what you, you can do is you can simply call web URL, which means this URL will now be staging dot URL that is in the in the in this particular file. So you could basically uh, you know easily read the properties from there right and then directly you can open the url Good. so you can have pojos maintained here uh, you can see all these pojos are getting maintained here uh, and then you can also have pages uh, which is basically for your web automation you you separate your pages you have login page reset password page and everything uh, mentioned here and then you can also have uh, screens for so we call pages in web automation for mobile automation we call them as screens we put them here and the provider class just to provide custom implementation uh, if you want to launch android app you can extend this web driver provider and you can put your implementation there so i have covered all of these in the selenite playlist so if you are going to work with one framework you need to definitely know about um, all these libraries again guys don't think this is an uh, extra thing that you have to add if you if you learn all these things they all have a purpose through my experience i have learned this in the hard way i'm just trying to give you guys a better way to write your code so even if you notice here uh, in the one framework look at the code that we are writing it's it's, it's very simple so add employee test consists of two variables right uh, that is employee details and login details that is needed for the test and this is a web test uh, login page dot get instance and then you log into the application navigate to the employee information page add new employee and check whether the employee is created successfully look how readable the code is it's it's like some manual tester giving you some information on how to execute this test and your automated test is also as readable as this right so you can you can have a look at these codes uh, you will wonder how selenet brings these kind of readability Okay, um, I hope this video is useful. In the next video, I will cover how to create a test and then, you know, uh, basically help you to use this framework, right? I'll see you guys in another video. Thank you. Bye-bye.